Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Coffee in the Word. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope and pray that you're doing well this morning. <clears throat> oh, the taste of Austin. That's good stuff too. All right. <clears throat> All right, well, this morning, uh, July 28th of 2024, um, Sunday morning. We're going to start off this morning at 2 Samuel, and then we're going to have a short passage in 2 Kings, and then we're going to Psalm 14, Psalm 145, Ephesians, and then we're going to finish it up with the Gospel of John. So, let's get started. 2 Samuel chapter 11 Verses 1 through 15. And as always, may God bless the reading of his word. And this one is entitled Bathsheba and Uriah Wronged by David. Mm. Here we go. In the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle, David sent Joab with his officers and all Israel with him. They ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. It happened late one afternoon when David rose from his couch and was walking about on the roof of the king's house, that he saw from the roof a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. David sent someone to inquire about the woman. It was reported, This is Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. <clears throat> so David sent messengers to get her. And she came to him, and he lay with her. Now she was purifying herself after her period. Then she returned to her house. The woman conceived, and she sent and told David, I am pregnant. So David sent word to Joab, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked how Joab and the people fared, and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. Uriah went out of the king's house and there followed him a present from the king. But Uriah slept at the entrance of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and did not go down to his house. When they told David Uriah did not go down to his house, David said to Uriah, You have just come from a journey. Why did you not go down to your house? Uriah said to David, The ark and, and Israel and Judah remain in booths, and my lord Joab and the servants of my house are camping in the open field. Shall I then go to my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do such a thing. Then David said to Uriah, Remain there today also, and tomorrow, and I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day. On, on the next day, David invited him to eat and drink in his presence, and made him drunk. And in the evening, he went out to lie on his couch with the servants of his Lord, but he did not go down to his house. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab, and sent it by the hand of Uriah. In the letter he wrote, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting, and then draw back from him, so that he may be struck down and die. Oh, David. Mm. All right. Second uh, Kings chapter 4, verses 42 through 44. And this one is entitled, Elisha Feeds a Hundred People. Uh, let me see, shall I? I'm looking at a, a word here that I'm making sure I'm going to pronounce it right. Okay. All right, here we go. A man came from Baal Shalishah, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, twenty loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, Give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how could I set this before a hundred people? 
So he repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall all eat and have some left. He said it before them. They ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. Hmm, good stuff. Good stuff. Get a little, voice is a little scratchy this morning. All right. Psalm 14. This one is entitled, God in the Company of the Righteous. Fools say in their hearts, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abomin abominable deeds. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on humankind to see if there are any who are wise, who seek after God. They have all gone astray. They are, they are all like, like, alike perverse. There is no one who does good, no, not one. Have they no knowledge? All the evil doers who eat up my people as they eat bread, and do not call upon the Lord. There they shall be in great terror, for God is with the company of the righteous. You would confound the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that deliverance for Israel would come from Zion, when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people. Jacob will rejoice. Israel will be glad. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Psalm 145, verses 10 through 18. And this one is entitled, Open Wide Your Hand. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words, and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling, and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all who look to you, and give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways, and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Mm, good stuff. All right, the epistle lesson this morning. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. And this one is entitled, Prayer to Christ. <clears throat> For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's good stuff. All right, get a little coffee before going to the gospel lesson. Oh, that's good. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 21. This one is entitled, Jesus Feeds 5,000. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii would not be enough, would not be, would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. 
One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, also, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. <clears throat> when they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves, left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and to take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea of Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. This is the word of the Lord this morning. You know, it's interesting that they, they wanted to make him king, and uh, you, you, you would think, well, he is king. But uh, the reason that they were wanting to make him king and why he with, withdrew, as they, I've read and studied that they were just looking for a free meal, which, well. And I heard this one recently, um, the 12 baskets. Uh, the baskets, they uh, someone had described it and I, 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 to be honest, I don't know where I heard this. I heard it, heard it recently, but the twelve baskets. It was, uh, it was Pastor Randy that said this. The, uh, the baskets were like big barrels. They were huge, and so it's just interesting that they had that much. And it just, uh, anyway, thought that was interesting. All right. Well, let's go to the prayers. And this is the word of the Lord this morning, by the way. Uh, so, with that. Uh, as usual on Sundays, the Revised Common Lectionary has a series of prayers, and I'd like to share those with you. There's a thematic prayer, an intercessory prayer, and then a scriptural prayer. So, let us pray. O oh God, sustain us in the complexity of our humanity, as you sustained, sustained David, playing the harp of youth, throwing stones at giant problems, loving our friends beyond wisdom, dancing worship, mourning children, breaking our hearts in psalms, and longing for warmth in our old bones. Amen. And then, we praise your abiding guidance, O God, for you sent us Jesus, our teacher and Messiah, to model for us the way of love for the whole universe. We offer these prayers of love on behalf of ourselves and our neighbors, on behalf of your creation, and our fellow creatures. And then, in your compassionate love, O God, you nourish us with the words of life and bread of blessing. Grant that Jesus may calm our fears and move our hearts to praise your goodness by sharing our, our bread with others. Amen and amen. All right, well, as usual, it is an absolute pleasure for me to get up and do this every morning. I, I, I look forward to it in the mornings, and um, so it's it's a it's a pleasure. Thank you for tuning in. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Y'all have a great day. So be safe, be happy, and be blessed. And we'll see you tomorrow morning on Coffee in the Word. God bless. <music>